Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, Audie is hiding in the bedroom. He may or may not come out. What can I say? He's a cat. They are inherently unpredictable, but we'll see. Um, let me start off with, I understand that the Princess of Wales is out and about, so who knows? Maybe our yellow has done her a little good. Let's hope. Uh, she's not back to work yet, but, you know, that's okay. At least if she's out and about, we all know that, you know, she's healthy. She's active. She's back out in the world, and that obviously the worst is behind her. So, excellent news. Meanwhile, the ex-royals of Montecito have been quiet lately. I assume it is in large part because of the ghastly fallout from the quasi-royal, well, pseudo-royal Nigeria tour, and we're not hearing anything new about the planned trip to Ghana, or that Nutmeg has decided she is now 43% Ghanaian, but hey, the day is still young. Uh, given the fact that they've been so quiet. I would really love the chance this is giving me to take a look at some issues that we've explored on this channel, but that have been refocused for me in light of Lady C's book. And by the way, if you haven't had a chance to read it, get a copy, whatever, please do so. It's very, very enlightening. And she totally reframed a situation for me that I thought I had a pretty good handle on. Guess I didn't. And we're going to talk about that this evening. All right, when we come back. So, what is this all about? Well, we talked at length about Nutmeg using prosthetics during the alleged pregnancy with the alleged first child. We didn't see very much of that during the alleged pregnancy with the alleged second child because, of course, she was off in California and California was in lockdown for at least part of the time, but the pandemic was still out there. So no one had any expectations that anyone, let alone an allegedly pregnant woman, might be out and about making the rounds publicly. And of course, she retreated. Uh, what we're going to talk about tonight may shed some light on that. Can't guarantee it, but I would have to say, that if I had been her after the debacle of January 2019, I would have hidden myself away if I was trying to pull off a second pregnancy scam. Absolutely. Oh, I'm sorry, a third pregnancy scam. I forgot about the miscarriage scam in between. But what we want to talk about tonight is the first pregnancy. Um, and I'm going to tell you right now that Lady C completely changed my mind about this. I, I've done videos about this in the past, and the first time I addressed this in a video, I walked away saying, I am about 55% sure that Nutmeg was pregnant with putative firstborn child, and just patting her belly out of some bizarre Hollywood-generated sense of it doesn't count unless you're as big as a house when you're pregnant, and that if she wasn't that big, she would enhance it because, you know, she's, she's an attention-seeking histrionic, frankly. And I was about 45% convinced by the people who are arguing in favor of surrogacy. 
Well, Lady C's book really turn that upside down for me. And I would now have to say I am at least, at least 55% convinced that she wasn't pregnant and only about 45% convinced that, yeah, she was, but she was patting the belly. And what Lady C did to change this for me was laid out a very careful timeline of events. And I think this is important because I had missed this completely when I was looking at this the first time around. Uh, I just did not put the events of this alleged pregnancy in the context of what else was going on at the time. So let's get in our Wayback Machine and take a look at mid-January 2019. So we are going to start with the big event that took place in mid-January 2019. And I have done a video specifically about this too. Um, by the way, if I don't put up cards, I will link them in the video notes. Now, on January 14th, Nutmeg made a trip to Birkenhead, which is someplace in England that I have never been to. So I can't speak to that. I, um, I honestly really don't know anything about the place at all, except that who knows, it may go down in history as the beginning of the end. But she was wearing that uh, red dress, purple coat, no, purple coat, red, red coat, purple dress. There we go. And she was photographed with the bump dropping. There's no way to get past this. And I know people did at the time. They said, oh, it's a gust of wind. Well, you know, a gust of wind might, in fact, blow your skirt out a little around your knees, but it doesn't blow your giant pregnant belly away. No. And as we can clearly see from the photographs, one minute there is a giant pregnant belly. The next minute, there is no pregnant belly and a big bulge around her knees. So what we have to keep in mind at this point is uh, Nutmeg also in this particular set of engagements in Birkenhead, whatever she was doing there, had indicated that she was uh, six months pregnant. The baby was due in April. Well, Turns out the baby was due in May, so oops. But what we have here is something, a state of events, a pregnant woman's belly being photographed around her knees that should have triggered flashing red lights everywhere. It should have been commented on by the press. It should have required some kind of explanation. It should have set people wondering. But that didn't happen. And Lady C goes into a lot of detail on this subject in her book that apparently the royal family was insulated from this by their staff, which is certainly possible, in fact, possibly even likely. The press just looked at this and said, ouch, this is too hot to handle. Possible a little less likely. My own theory on this, and this is not Lady C's theory, this is my theory based on her timeline, is that the reason people were not looking to play with this one is because of the incredibly negative ramifications something like this would have had, not just for Nutmeg and the Sock Puppet, but for the whole royal family. So the thing is, 
Uh, Lady C is a monarchist, obviously, I and mean, she was born in a Commonwealth country. She married into the British aristocracy. This is this is how she is self-identifying these days. And I, I can't fault her for that. There are a lot of people who haven't married into aristocracy who are monarchists. I am not, because I am American. I look at this situation and think to myself, what could the anti-monarchists do with a clear, a, a absolutely clear effort by a member of the royal family to pass off a false pregnancy, a warming pan baby in this day and age. And given the fact that there's, there has often been a large anti-monarchist sentiment in the UK, not large enough to topple the monarchy, but it's not inconsiderable would anyone want to fuel those fires? Because the fact is that the, the title of head of state, which is what Charles has now, passes through bloodlines. And bloodlines are unpredictable. And you can have a batch of brilliant despots like the Tudors, who were brilliant, but they were also despotic. It's, you know, it's hard to get away from both of those facts. You could have wastrels like the Hanoverians. Uh, Henry VI was a catatonic, okay? And the bottom line is, when you're dealing with the luck of the genetic draw, who knows what you come up with? But if you take that genetic component out of it, you don't even have that. So yeah, I can easily see that people would not have wanted to deal with this because it was too potentially explosive. Lady C also mentioned that maybe they didn't want to deal with this because knowing Nutmeg and her histrionics, perhaps they were concerned that she was not pretending to be pregnant, she actually was pregnant, but she was patting her belly and dropping her belly in the hopes of catching them, you know, and then she could say, no, I am pregnant, and, you know, making fools of everyone. Uh, not an unreasonable suspicion when you're dealing with someone like Nutmeg, who does, in fact, have a rather circuitous bent to her mind. But that seems to have been the climate at the time, that no one was going to touch this. And in fact, no one in the mainstream media did. The only people in the mainstream media who even acknowledged it were discounting it. Oh, gust of wind. No, 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 no. We're not stupid. We've seen the pictures. We've still got the pictures. And a picture is worth a thousand words. We saw the bump dump, and we can still see it today. The photos still exist. That was one. Now, let's pull out a calendar and take a look at this, because the bump dump was on January 14th. Let's just fast forward two days, two days, to January 16th. So what do we have here? We have Nutmeg off in the afternoon on a visit to a Mayhew animal shelter at some sort of animal charity. And then we had another serious bump mishap. Nutmeg squats down to pat a dog when she gets up, and this is all on video. The videos are all over YouTube. I'm sure we've all seen them by now, but if you haven't, just Nutmeg, Mayhew, bump, pop, throw that into a search engine, and you better believe you'll come up with it. As she stands, and mind you, she was squatting with her knees together in those five-inch heels of hers, very, very reasonable, you hear this sudden popping sound. 
And immediately people began saying, it's that prosthetic bump. That's what happened to it when she was squatting like that, because where else was the bump going to go? It had deflated. And then suddenly getting up like that, the air rushed back into this prosthetic, and that was the pop noise. Now, a lot of people wrote that off as wild conspiracy theories, but the problem is, two days earlier, the bump was down at her knees. Oh, but we're not through with our timeline yet. So, January 16th, we're still on that same day of the pop bump affair. Nutmeg is at the Cirque du Soleil with the sock puppet. And for those of you who have a good memory, this was the day Nutmeg alleged on the Oprah interview that she was, in fact, curled up on the floor, sobbing, ready to snuff it all. Now, of course, I've done a video on that, too, and I, I never believed that. I mean, from the moment I first heard it, I never believed that story. I still do not. And I came under a lot of fire for saying that, but no, no. I consider that to be an outrageous insult to people who are truly contemplating doing the worst, because it's not something you can just make light of or use to cover uh, an otherwise miserable week in terms of your own personal publicity. So yeah. What we have here is a series of events that were not making the mainstream media, but were well documented, and that shoe could drop at any time. And then, of course, Nutmeg comes out at a later date saying, no, this was my mental health crisis. No, it wasn't. We now know and thanks to Lady C, because she put that timeline together very carefully. We now know what was really on Nutmeg's mind on the 16th of January. And no, it, it wasn't doing the worst. It was the fact that she had been caught out faking the pregnancy, not just once on the 14th, but twice on the 16th, too. So, yeah kind of puts it in a different perspective, doesn't it? It certainly did for me. And that timeline alone was enough to really flip things on their head. It was enough to, to take me from 45% convinced that, yeah, she probably wasn't pregnant to begin with, to 55 or more percent convinced that she probably wasn't pregnant to begin with. Because in addition to playing the mental health card at this time and going to the palace and saying, oh, I am mentally ill and I need help and they're not giving it to her because, yeah, heck, I can go to the company down the street that I don't work for and tell them I'm not doing well mentally and if they send me away, Hey, I know they're racists. It's like, it was craziness. It was just sheer craziness. And as Lady C has documented, people came right out and said that she was doing this to lay a paper trail. But what was she really laying the paper trail for? An explanation of why she did this for the inevitable getting caught moment. That makes perfect sense to me. And when you start to see this as one whole cohesive picture, the two pregnancy missteps, and I'm just going to leave it at that, along with the alleged mental health disaster, which again flies in the face of what we have seen, because she was not 
curled up on the floor sobbing that day. She was off visiting an animal shelter, and we've got the pictures to prove it. And that's all there is to that. She was off at the Cirque du Soleil that evening. We've got the pictures to prove it. Neither she nor the sock puppet actually seemed all that unhappy when they were there. Um, frankly, not as unhappy as I would expect her to be, given what had happened earlier that day and two days earlier. So I will give her credit for still managing to put a good face on it and soldier along. I'd have been hiding under my bed if something like that happened. But we can see now what was going on in that time frame. And I think it's very enlightening. And it is the time frame that really turns it for me. So, this whole theory begs a couple of questions. First of all, if these belly dump and belly pop events were so potentially damaging, why would Nutmeg go out of her way when she was with Oprah to shine a light on this particular period in her life. Now, I've actually got a good answer for that because we all know that she's not a very good cohesive planner and she does a lot of things on the fly. It seems very likely that this whole, you know, goodbye cruel world story of hers was on the fly. Maybe not at the Oprah interview, but certainly not something that, that she was really wedded to, because even though she had gone to the Palace HR office, the HR office that covers the staff, like the gardeners and the chefs and the maids and the communications specialists, to claim that she needed service from them, leaving them, I'm sure, very, very puzzled, just as puzzled as if I walked in off the street and said I needed service from them because she didn't work for them. But yeah, looks like she had started to sow a few seeds at the time, but then let it slide and then picked up that thread again. Because even though the mainstream media had completely ignored these pregnancy missteps, the internet didn't. And Lady C does point that out. The internet noticed. The internet commented. And with the proof that existed, photographs, sound clips, with the proof that existed, there is no way everybody who was looking at this can be dismissed as a lunatic, a crackpot, a conspiracy theorist, a hater, a racist, whatever label they want to put on those of us who will not be gaslighted into believing that what we see with our own eyes is not what we see with our own eyes. So yeah, I think we just resurface that because it was convenient at the moment. It was sort of a, a golden parachute that she had tucked away on a previous occasion and trotted out. Because Lord knows she got a tremendous amount of sympathy when she went on Oprah claiming that her life was so bad she was in such a state of despair. And as I said, that, that rankles with me because there are people out there who really are in difficult circumstances. They really are genuinely in despair. And someone who was a, unhappy because she was verging on getting caught while she was pulling off a major league hoax to use that to cover her tracks. Oh no, no, that's, that's just, that's not even tacky. I'm not sure I have a word for that. I'll, well, I have words for it, but none that I really want to share in public. So that was what I wanted to share with you. What it was that got me 
from. No, I really think she maybe was pregnant, but, you know, patted out the belly all the way over to no. I really think she wasn't pregnant. I really think it was all a hoax, start to finish. I don't know where the putative child came from. I don't know if this was surrogacy. I don't know if the stork delivered the child in a basket to their doorstep. I don't know if these are hired actors. I have absolutely no idea where these babies came from, because, you know, there are two of them now. No idea where they came from. But I think it's safe to guess, and that's all we can really do at the moment, safe to guess that the first one did not come from wherever we thought it came from. And shame on the mainstream media for not dealing with this at the time. Here's the thing, and, and this is something else that brought this to my attention at this particular moment. It is starting to hit the mainstream media. Again, in the video notes below, you will see the article, and there is an article that one of the palace photographers, I guess on the Royal Rota of Photographers, uh, had recently given an interview about his concerns about the peculiarities about the alleged birth of the putative child, Archie. And yeah, it's trickling out. So could this photographer have been influenced by Lady C's book and her very careful timeline that she's created to put the pieces together? Possibly. Possibly. I'd like to think so. Was it something else that triggered this revelation on behalf of the photographer? I don't know. But it is trickling out. And all we need is a little tiny trickle, and eventually that will just trigger an avalanche. So, I thought this was worth revisiting at this time, because as I say, it was the timeline. That was the part of the puzzle I was missing, because I, I wasn't paying attention to the royal family back when Nutmeg was allegedly pregnant with the child. And later when I did, I just didn't see it. It was right in front of me, so this is my bad. It was right in front of me, but I never hooked it up. The two incidents, uh, the one at Birkenhead, the one at Mayhew being two days apart, you know, the whole alleged mental health crisis taking place on the day of the Mayhew incident, and then everything that followed after that, including Nutmeg and the Sock Puppets, insane crusade to silence the internet. Well, yeah, because it was the internet that was keeping this information alive, keeping it out there before the public. So, sure. Um, the truth is, I don't think the British media is the sock puppet's real enemy. I think it is just the average person on the street Anybody with a cell phone who could make a video and post it to TikTok, anybody with a cell phone who can post to Reddit or Quora or YouTube, anywhere else, Twitter, oh my goodness, yeah, what are they, X now? Sorry, X. Um, I'm an old woman, I'm having trouble keeping up with this. We are the greatest threat to them, not the British media. The British media kept quiet about this. So, I wonder where the conspiracy theory is left when you consider that the great bugbear of the British media that the sock puppet believes is out to get him went out of their way to 
hush up and cover up and ignore and sweep under the carpet the one thing that really could bring about their absolute downfall. Problem is, it could bring about the downfall of the entire royal family. Because if you can't guarantee who is, who is the parents of, of your children, who's the mom, who's the dad, then what does the monarchy mean? If it's not a bloodline, it's not anything. So yeah, I think they're playing with fire. And I do not think we have heard the last of this. So, fortunately, we've had a quiet moment, so I've had a chance to share this with you. Much thanks to Lady C for having put that all together. And like I say, I would not have connected the dots on my own. All right, that's what I have for you today. We're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. Uh, I will see you all over the weekend for the Coffee and Conversation videos and back here Sunday evening for more of Just Chatting. Meanwhile, have a terrific day. Okay.